So turtles that and tortoises that live in uh, dry climates um, like deserts uh, and grasslands tend to have some different uh, temperature and um, habitat guidelines. Um, so again, keeping to the basics of setting up an enclosure, first of all, you want to pick the right size of enclosure. The bigger, the better. Uh, people always ask this to me. There's no exact size recommendation. Um, you just want the largest enclosure that you can provide. The other thing uh, to s begin setting up the enclosure is uh, picking a substrate. So substrate is just the material you put at the bottom uh, of the enclosure. So a desert uh, turtle or tortoise might be living uh, on a sandy or dirty or even rocky uh, base and you can try and mimic that in your enclosure, but keep in mind um, that we do see a lot of tortoises um, that will eat their substrate or their bedding. Um, so that includes small rocks and sand and dirt. Um, so you want to be very careful about that and, and make sure that that's not happening in your environment. The other thing that all turtles and tortoises need um, would be a source of heat. Keeping in mind, uh, they are ectotherms. That means that they rely on the temperature of their environment to regulate their own body temperature. So it's very important that you provide a heat source. So in, in desert climates, obviously it can get very warm during the day. So we're looking at providing uh, a heated area of the enclosure um, that's probably upwards of 90 to 100 degrees. Desert species also uh, tend to cool off quite a lot at night, so the temperature can drop down at night uh, to 70 degrees or even a little bit below. We call that creating a thermal gradient. Um, reptiles, again, they're going to move within their environment um, to warmer places um, and cooler places as they require it to maintain their core body temperature. The other thing that's very important in desert species would be the um, exposure to ultraviolet light. So we call this UVB or ultraviolet B radiation. Um, this is part of the sun's natural light. This is very important uh, in these turtles and tortoises for the synthesis of vitamin D and for a normal calcium metabolism. Without UVB light, um, they can develop um, many different types of metabolic issues. The next most important thing would be diet. Um, a lot of these species uh, are eating grasses, leaves, flowers, um, and again, you want to look up whatever your species is that you have and try and figure out what its natural diet is like and try and replicate that as best you can. The diamondback terrapin is native to North America. They are named for the diamond pattern on their top shell or their carapace. So their, their habitat is the coastline extending from Maine down to Florida and then west into Texas. They're an unusual species that's found often in brackish water. Brackish water uh, is salty, but not as salty as ocean water. So again, they're aquatic turtles. They're carnivorous. <clears throat> they eat snails uh, and other shellfish, uh, small fish, carrion. Adult males grow to be about five inches and the adult females are larger at nine inches. They can be kept as pets. <clears throat> There's a lot of debate about what type of water to provide for them in their aquarium setup. It is difficult to maintain a brackish water setup in captivity, so some keepers of diamondback terrapins opt to just maintain them in fresh water. Others feel like they do better with some salinity. <clears throat> Again, they do need a land portion to come out and bask. The water temperatures should be maintained between 75 and 80 degrees. And again, a basking, a basking area of over 85 degrees is recommended. So when you're setting up an enclosure um, and taking care of a, a turtle from a temperate forest type environment, and that's often uh, in this country, it will be various types of box turtles. You do want to pay special attention to the humidity, the lighting, and the heat requirements of these turtles. Again, picking out the appropriate size enclosure. Uh, you want the biggest enclosure that you can, you can get. You want the animal to be able to move around comfortably within the enclosure and get plenty of exercise. You want to provide a heated basking area. You want the turtle to be able to uh, regulate its own body temperature by moving throughout the enclosure from warm to cool areas um, based on what it needs. The other thing that's important is uh, the addition of ultraviolet light. If you're housing a reptile <clears throat> and turtle or tortoise indoors, 
um, you need to provide those with a, a special light bulbs. UVB light is very important for uh, vitamin D synthesis and normal calcium metabolism in these turtles. The other thing that's slightly different um, with turtles living in, in the more forest type environments um, would be humidity and the humidity is going to be higher than your de desert species and you want to maintain that by misting, providing large water bowls um, and possibly large plants and, and moist substrates. The other thing that's very important for uh, caring for any sort of tortoise or turtle would be providing with adequate diet. You need to look up what the normal diet is for your species in the wild and try and replicate it as best you can. So leopard tortoises are a fairly large African tortoise. They have a very beautiful color pattern on their shell. They can grow to up to 50 pounds or more. So again, this is a species that you want to be careful about purchasing as a baby if you don't have the appropriate uh, size uh, enclosure for it as it gets larger. They are <clears throat> tortoises that are found in a fairly dry environment. They eat grasses, leaves, and flowers in their, in their native environment. And in captivity, we can feed them leafy green vegetables and also dried haze. So leopard tortoises do need a basking area um, of over 90 degrees in temperature. It should cool down into the 80s during the day and can get a little cooler at night. So long neck turtles can also be referred to as eastern snake neck turtles. These are native to Australia. They belong to a group of turtles called side neck turtles and the thing that makes these species unique is the fact that they retract their head horizontally or to the side um, instead of centrally. Long neck turtles can be kept as pets, although they do require um, an aquatic setup um, and they can get quite large and they can live for a long time. Uh, so be prepared for some long-term care. They are carnivorous and they also do need um, an area, a land area to come out of the water and bask in their enclosure. So musk and mud turtles are found throughout North, Central, and South America. They're a relatively small species of aquatic turtle, so they're one of the easier species to keep in captivity um, because their enclosures don't have to be so large. Because they're found in, in so many different climates, it is important that you figure out what species of turtle you are planning to inquire um, so that you can adjust its water temperature and basking temperatures appropriately. Musk turtles and mud turtles, just like other aquatic turtles, need an area of their setup to come out onto land to bask uh, and have exposure to ultraviolet light. They are carnivorous um, and again in the wild they'd be eating shellfish, small fish, aquatic invertebrates and we try and mimic that in captivity. We like to provide a varied diet, um, but they can also take to commercial pellets, aquatic turtle pellets. So painted turtles are aquatic turtles that are native to North America. We have four subspecies. They are known for some of the colorful uh, markings that they have on their skin and, and shell. People do keep these as pets. <clears throat> Again, I wouldn't pick one up from the wild because uh, it's probably protected uh, in your state and you want to double check those rules before you get one from the wild, but you can purchase them um, in pet stores and in captivity. Painted turtles are omnivores, uh, meaning they eat both plant and animal matter, <clears throat> and they do require an aquatic setup. So the razorback musk turtle is native here in North America. They're found in the central south US. They're an aquatic turtle. They actually stay relatively small in size, um, so they are a turtle that you could keep uh, indoors. 
if you wanted to. They require a basic aquatic setup uh, with a land area that they can come out and bask in. They require heat, they require a source of ultraviolet light, and they're also carnivores. So again, in their natural environment, they'd be eating bit small fish, uh, aquatic invertebrates, snails, things like that. In captivity, we can feed them those things if you can find them. Otherwise, there are some commercial aquatic turtle pellets that they will take too. It's recommended that the basking temperature be quite warm, uh, 90, 95 degrees, um, and that you heat the water to 75, and between 75 and 80 degrees. So red -earth sliders are an aquatic turtle. They're native to the southeast of the U.S. We find them very commonly in the pet trade. And this has a few downsides. One is that people don't realize when these red-eared sliders are purchased when they're, when they're small, they can, they can actually grow to be this size. So the housing requirements for the turtle uh, changes quite a lot over its lifetime. So what may have started out as a cute little quarter-sized turtle in a standard fish tank um, will all of a sudden require some type of larger pond setup uh, when it gets to this adult size. So in this species, the females do get larger than the males, and this is, this is a female. You can also tell it's a female because the claws on, on its front feet are uh, short, and on the males, they'd probably be at least 10 times this length. Red-eared sliders need a basking area in their enclosure. They need to come out, dry off, and heat themselves up. They need a basking area of upwards of 90 degrees. They usually also require a water heater to keep the water temperature between 75 and 80 degrees. Never release a red-eared slider into the wild. It's illegal and what we're finding is that a lot of these turtles, um, because they are so hardy, they're starting to take over parts of the country where they were not meant to be pushing out the native species. So for instance, here in New York, if you go to certain neighborhoods, you're able to buy the hatchlings uh, illegally. So again, you never want to purchase a turtle under four inches of shell size due to salmonella risks. Um, you won't get in trouble as the buyer, uh, but the seller is doing something illegal. So a lot of people don't realize when they see those cute little turtles that they're going to get so big and require so much care. Um, it is a misconception that turtles are easy to take care of. They require a, a specialized setup and a, and a specialized diet. So here in New York, um, when you go to some of our parks, you'll actually see these red-eared sliders in the ponds there, and they're not actually not native to New York State. Um, so this is a big problem. They introduce disease into our native turtle population, as well as pushing out uh, and competing uh, with the native uh, species. Um, this is also becoming a problem in other countries where these guys have been imported for the pet trade. So again, never impulse purchase a turtle. Um, do your homework first and be sure you can provide the many, many years, decades of, of care that, that these animals will need. So Russian tortoises are native to Central Asia. They are a smaller tortoise, so they are common in the pet trade here in this country because they don't grow to large sizes. They still can live for quite a long time though, so again, before you by any type of tortoise, um, be sure you can provide a home for many, many years of its life. They are plant eaters or herbivores in their native environment. Uh, they would be eating grasses, flowers, leaf, leafy plants. They can also um, tolerate some temp temperature fluctuations. So again, um, they are used to some, some pretty warm daytime temperatures and it can cool off quite a bit at night in their native environment. It, is recommended that they have a basking area of 90, 95 degrees, and that at night it cools off uh, to around 70 degrees or even a little bit cooler than that. Most of the Russian tortoises sold in pet stores in the U.S. are actually wild caught and imported. So even though they are quite hardy, uh, and that's partly why they are so popular, it is recommended that when you first purchase when you bring it to a reptile veterinarian and have it checked for things like intestinal parasites um, and other problems that could have occurred due to the fact that it was born in the wild.